Hello, and welcome to today's Juniper Cloud Workload Protection Demonstration. We will show you how together the VSRX and Juniper Cloud Workload Protection can protect the workload. Let's take a look at our setup. Here we have a normal application user and an attacker. Both will use the two windows that will appear on the left-hand side of the screen. A typical user will request the website and the attacker sends some routine curve requests for at least one attack. We will also see the VSRX UI on the left and the firewall itself shows the dynamic of the IP big blocks. On the right, we will have the Juniper Cloud Workload Protection UI so we can see the traffic coming into the firewall. We will start with some normal traffic and there are two users, our typical user and the attacker from the slide I showed you just a second ago. As you can see, it's the TCP and normal applications, and we can see some closed access from the internet to the server, and that's a policy name. You will notice here that we don't have any activity displayed. Let's launch an attack. Of course, we will not show you the code for that attack. As you can see, we have a warning. I'll go ahead and refresh. We have the remote code execution launch on this web server. As you can see, it was blocked as expected. We have the full detail of the incident. On the incident detail tab, we can see the customer ID, message, severity level, incident ID, trace, and validation timestamp. Next, let's take a look at the identifier tab. This tab shows which application is affected and where it is running. Here we can see the container IP, the container name, the container ID, the time the incident started, the image ID, the node name and ID, and we can see even more detail. Next, let's look at the attack detail tab. Here we have the attack details, even the line number where the incident has occurred, and we can see in the additional tabs the trace of the application, and we can see additional information about the attack. Here you can see our attacker's IP address, which will now be blocked, and we also have the command used to execute the attack. Now, Juniper Cloud Workload Protection takes that address and when the attacker tries to perform a standard request, he will not be granted access. The request will be automatically blocked. Here we can see that the session has been denied and we are matching the policy with Juniper Cloud Workload Protection. These fields speak automatically to each other and will block the attacker permanently on any other website behind this firewall. Of course, that can also apply to other firewalls on the network communicating with Juniper Cloud Workload Protection. Additionally, we can dig into more details on Juniper Cloud Workload Protection, such as where the vulnerabilities are on a server, whether these vulnerabilities are critical or not, and what other applications are running on the server. When we double click and go into more detail, we can see whether the application is vulnerable and other related information. We also have visibility into both active containers running as well as past containers. We can see information including behaviors and vulnerabilities in both detail and summary form. We have a daily activity report that helps you compare attacks and has all the information related to vulnerabilities and attacks on your network at your fingertips. Going back to our attacker, we can see through the integration between the VSRX and Juniper Cloud Workload Protection that they are still blocked. We can see this attack on the firewall logs and all future requests will be permanently blocked. Thank you for joining me for this demonstration of Juniper Cloud Workload Protection.